Hello and welcome to our number talk. Today we are looking at the expression 36 times 4. And how a number talk works is that you try to solve this problem mentally without any paper or pencil. And then think about the strategy that you use to solve this problem. And in just a moment we will look at many different strategies that you can use to try to figure out what 36 times 4 equals. So go ahead and pause the video, take a moment to figure this problem out without using paper or pencil. When you have your answer and your solution, unpause it and we'll check our answers together. So one way that we could always solve is using the distributive property. And there's going to be a few different ways we can use the distributive property. But what this does is this takes our 36 times 4, and this breaks apart our 4. You notice we're going to break it apart into 2 and 2. So we're going to take our 4, and we're going to break it up into 2 plus 2. And so the distributive property lets us break apart or distribute that 36 and multiply by each of those two add-ins. So we're going to take our 36, we're going to multiply it by the first 2, then we're going to add it to the product of our 36 and our second 2. So 36 times 2, well, we're just going to double 36 and get 72 and get 72. So guess what we're going to get? We're going to get 144. Hopefully that's the number you came up with. If you didn't use this distributive property, many of us like this version of the distributive property. It's always a good go-to. So 36 times 4, instead of breaking up the 4 into 2 and 2, what we're going to do is we're going to break apart the 36 into its place value. We're going to say it's 30 plus 6. Always a good way to go. And then we're going to distribute or that 4, multiply by 4, into each of those add-ins. So we're going to take our 30, multiply that by 4. And we're going to take our 4, multiply that also by 4. Actually, it's 6 times 4. There we go. Let's make sure we get our correct factors there. And so 30 times 4, that's going to get you your 120. 6 times 4, that's going to get you your 24. 120 and 24, 144. Another way we could do it is doubling and halving. Doubling and halving is a good strategy, and you're going to notice that it's going to look like we keep doing the same thing again and again. But 36 is a pretty big number, so it's kind of hard to work with. So we're going to take our 36 times 4. What doubling and halving does says that if you double one factor, you can have the other factor, and you still get the same product. So what we did is we took our 36 right here, and we doubled it, right? So 36 doubled is 72. But in order to keep our equation balanced, we had to take our 4. We had to take away half of it. That's what we did right here. And that goes down to 2. So we doubled our 36. We took our 4, cut it in half, and guess what we get? Our same answer of 144. So doubling and halving is a great strategy. It doesn't always work, but when it does, it's pretty easy. And then our final strategy that we're going to look at in this video is the associative property and the commutative property all wrapped up into one. So we're going to take our 36 times 4. We're going to take our 36 and we're going to break it up into 3 times 12. So 3 times 12, still multiplying by 4. And what the associative property does is it lets us move these parentheses. It lets us group our factors in different ways. So instead of three groups of 12 times 4, we're going to say three groups of 12 groups of 4. And then the reason that's the associative property it just lets us move the parentheses and switch how we group three or more factors. But the commutative property is our order property. And that's going to be helpful because I really don't want to do 12 groups of 4, what I'd rather do is flip these two around, and I'd rather do 3 groups of 4 groups of 12. And if we can do that, well, that's 12, 12, 12, and 12, so I've got 1, 2, I've got my 4 groups of 12 right here, and that's going to be 48, and that's another 48, that's 96, and that's another 48, and I'm going to get my 1, 
44. So if you found another way that is awesome, I'd love for you to drop that in the comment box of the video. And teachers, if you want this slide deck, you can find it on my website, 5minutemath.net.